As all of you know, the Street Fighter franchise has enjoyed a storied history of success in the games industry. When Street Fighter 2 hit the arcade in 1991, it revolutionized the one-on-one -on -one fighter. People flocked to it in droves, making it one of the most popular titles of its day. So popular, it was ported to countless platforms in the years after, hitting everything from the Genesis and PC Engine, and even the Game Boy and Master System got conversions. Riding high on the tidal wave of interest in the property, Capcom hooked up with Universal Pictures to develop a film based on it. Things seemed to be perfect right from the get-go. News began to break that the guy doing the screenplay had worked on action films such as 48 Hours, Commando, The Running Man, and Die Hard 1 and 2. Action star Jean-Claude Van Damme was attached to it as well, with a strong lineup of stars soon to follow. How could it fail? It was finished and released around Christmas of 1994 in North America and was absolutely crushed under a mountain of bad reviews. That did not stop Capcom from going forward with an arcade game based on the movie. They contracted Incredible Technologies, the Chicago-based company responsible for the Golden Tee golf games you have seen in the arcade for the last 30 years, to make a digitized fighter not too dissimilar to what we had seen in the Mortal Kombat series. They utilized many of the actors and actresses from the film and even added a few additional characters to spice up the lineup. It was released in June of 1995 and was an incredibly weird playing fighting game. While most of the moves worked very similar to what you had learned in the original Street Fighter, the timing, the combos, and the hitboxes all felt radically different. It wasn't an awful experience, but it sure was nowhere near as good as the game on which it was based. Even so, when Capcom announced Street Fighter the movie for the Saturn, I was reasonably interested because I wanted new games to play. Capcom dropped the 32-bit home version in August of 1995, just two months after the arcade. I was expecting a port, but what we ended up with was nothing of the kind. Unlike the arcade version, Capcom would develop the Saturn release in-house themselves. It's pretty apparent to me that they did not like the direction Incredible Technologies had gone, because they completely redid the gameplay engine for this one. What we have here is a game that plays very similar to Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, right down to the special moves, super meter, and the super combos you can pull off. While not everything is the same gameplay-wise, most of the same combos and strategies still work here and will not take Street Fighter II veterans very long to acclimate themselves to the slower speed and the new animation frames and how they affect things. Capcom also added some new moves to the mix and changed the way the super combo meter works. You'll notice now that when you do specials, your meter will change colors at about the halfway point giving you access to additional shadow moves that are sort of like mini super combos. These moves vary fighter to fighter, but are often things like double projectiles and variations of the regular special moves that hit more and reach further across the screen. To use them, you must press two punch or two kick buttons when you execute your special moves. If you do these new moves before the meter is maxed out, you actually lose some of the meter in the process. However, Get your meter maxed out, and you can do them as much as you want. Many of your favorite characters are back as well. Series staples Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, and Guile are of course there, as are most of the others. You do lose Dalsim, T-Hawk, and Fei Long, but gain the newcomer Captain Sawada. This is not a fair trade, however, as the new guy lacks any decent moves, any real personality, and has by far the most ridiculous super combo in the entire game. He throws his hands up and charges at you chest first, hitting you multiple times with a single frame of animation. Lazy programming would be an understatement. This had to be Capcom having a laugh and nothing more. Fortunately, Akuma makes a showing both as a playable choice and in his boss form, Shin Akuma. The game modes are pretty standard from there. You have a movie battle option that follows the film and chooses the fights for you, a street battle mode that is essentially the regular arcade option, Versus is there for two player battles and there is a trial mode that handicaps you against a host of CPU controlled opponents where one defeat means it's game over. 
This mode also scores you on how well you've done. You win. While you are likely to hear a lot of different opinions on the arcade version of Street Fighter the movie, it actually was not a bad looking game. The digitized images were colorful and the animation was quite solid. And while Capcom clearly used many of the same assets as that game for the home version, the end result is nowhere near as impressive. Animation has been cut dramatically across the board. Walking, retreating, and every move in between has nowhere near the fidelity of the arcade. Colors have been dramatically scaled back as well, resulting in an image that looks like it was done on the Super Nintendo instead of the 32-bit monster that was the Saturn. The entire image is washed out, dithered, and just a shadow of what was seen in the arcade version. Capcom also chose to redesign most of the stage graphics, and while some retain similar looks, overall what we got at home was pretty different. There really isn't any other way to say it. The home version of Street Fighter the movie is an ugly game that takes very little advantage of the Saturn's capabilities. While I do understand why Capcom chose to revamp the control, they really should have shot for a much closer visual representation of the arcade. This was also ported to the PlayStation around the same time, where it is just as ugly. I'm not sure how much RAM limitations played in these downgrades, but surely the Saturn could have given us a better looking game than what we saw here. There are 16-bit games that look better than this mess. The music of Street Fighter the movie has a number of great entries. Some of this was actually worth keeping, though I do miss some of the classic melodies. Some of the voices are rather poor, if not outright laughable, but you do get used to it. Let's take a listen to a few tracks to give you an idea of what it offers. I really am of two different opinions about Street Fighter the movie. On one hand, it plays well enough to hold my attention for short bursts, and I do enjoy a match every so often. However, the visuals are incredibly disappointing. Again, side by side to the arcade, it really does look bad. Even with the two games being different, they clearly share many assets, and these assets look and animate so much better in the arcade edition. This was no small issue as 3D polygons were quickly taking over the fighting genre, and for the very first original Street Fighter product in the 32-bit generation to look so bad was a real black eye on 2D gaming in general. It also didn't help that many people saw this as a retread of Street Fighter 2 with a Mortal Kombat style presentation. Or in short, Capcom pulling a cash grab with an old game with a new coat of paint. Street Fighter also did not translate well into digitized images. The moves look kinda silly, with some appearing outright ridiculous. There were also a number of bad casting issues that moved over from the movie. While I loved Asian beauty Ming-Na Wen as Chun-Li, and Kylie Minogue's sweet ass as Cammy, characters like DJ, Saget, and Ken look so silly it was hard to take them seriously. Despite these issues and complaints, I still found some enjoyment here. 
At the time of its release, the Saturn was in a major drought of software, with big hitters like Virtua Cop, Sega Rally, and Virtua Fighter 2 still months away. I had played a stall, Panzer Dragoon, and Daytona USA to death, and this hit right at the perfect time to hold me over until the holiday season. It's far from the best fighting game you'll play, but it's also far, far from the worst. You win! If you have never played the arcade version of Street Fighter the Movie, I highly recommend that you do. Not because it was anything special, but rather to see just how much better it looks than what we received in the home version. Capcom obviously made this quick and dirty, and it doesn't show off the Saturn's hardware in any way. There are pre-rendered 16-bit games that put this to shame visually. There are a few interesting tidbits of trivia about this game you may find worth noting. Almost all of the actors returned from the film to do the digitized images you see here. The exceptions were Blanca, who uses the original actor's stunt double since the moves were so difficult, and M. Bison, who also uses the movie stunt double due to the death of Raul Julia before full production of the game began. There is also a hidden music video in the game, should you beat it under the right circumstances. It has a number of the film's actors in it and is worth hearing at least once just to say you've seen it. Ultimately, Street Fighter the movie was a peculiar product. It was a game based on a movie that was based on a game, sort of art coming full circle for no reason at all. It was sometimes silly and sometimes ridiculous, but it played well enough to keep it from being a complete joke. Had Capcom kept the same visual quality as the arcade, I feel this one would have held up better in the eyes of history. Graphics play a major role in gamers' opinions, however, and Street Fighter the movie just didn't have enough to offer in that department. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.